Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with Sunday Live. And of course, in studio tonight, we have two women who are truly phenomenal in their own right. Uh, on my right, we have Josephine Kuler, who is a girl child champion, who's done a lot of work tirelessly for girls in Samburu. She's been recognized by the United Nations in Kenya. She was the UN in Kenya Person of the Year in 2013 to tell us more about her foundation and her hopes and dreams for the future. On my left, we have Lorna Kiplagat, who's an iconic athlete, and she's then transitioned. She's now a businesswoman, she has a world-class training center, and most recently, she launched her own sports apparel line. She'll tell us more about that a little later on as well. Welcome, both of you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you for being here. Happy Women's Day. Happy Women's we'll Day. See. Maybe yeah. I can start by asking you, Lorna, how did you spend Women's Day? I saw a little preview, but maybe you can tell us how you celebrated today. Yeah, today was uh, an amazing day for me because I've never done that uh, ever in my life. The half marathon? or I mean, running the half marathon was not a problem, but yeah. that, that, that I was running here in Kenya oh. with Her Excellence, the okay. First Lady, okay. was just an amazing, and for the good cause that we were doing for, mm. was just amazing. We yeah. had so much fun. Yeah, it looked it like so much fun. Yeah, it was so great. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. What did you do today? I was able to visit some of the girls who yeah. were studying here in Nairobi, yeah. and uh, yeah, and just had fun with them. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been recognized uh, by the UN. You've been recognized for your work. I know that growing up, you watched your mother really fight for the rights of the girl child, uh, particularly in Samburu. Tell us a little bit about what drove you to want to go into, uh, start a life of rescuing girls from early marriage. I think it's the experience, uh, just growing up as a girl, Samburu girl in the village mm. and watching your classmates getting married and you know not going to school at all and those who go to school are uh, plucked out of class mm. to get married so I, I, I started rescuing actually from my family yeah my, my own cousins mm. and mm. all that so mm. it, it, it was a childhood passion as you say I watched my mother to helping girls mm. so I think in me I saw that there can be a change mm -hmm. if I go I mean if I give back to my community mm -hmm. and try to ensure that these girls are going to school and okay. they're not being threatened by the harmful culture. When did you or there's I think there's some pictures running there you are with the first lady Her <laughs> Excellency Margaret Kenyatta what was happening there in that picture? Uh, we met with, uh, I went to uh, Addis mm -hmm. uh, um, last month and I uh, was able to, mm -hmm. to to interact with the first ladies mm -hmm. uh, of from Africa. Mm -hmm. I was doing a presentation on child marriage. And you're next to Michelle Obama. Oh yeah, I was next to Michelle Obama. And I think I need to stay close to the two of you in <laughs> studio, <laughs> friendship wise. We need to be <laughs> really close friends yes. to get to where you are. Uh, but just before I come to you, Lorna, tell us a little bit about the name of your foundation and some of the things you've managed to achieve so far? Uh, my foundation is called Samburu Girls Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we are two and a half years now mm -hmm. are running. And we've been able to rescue over 200 girls wow. who are all in school. Yeah, because uh, once you get them out of trouble, then they have to go to school okay. because they are still underage. That's amazing. <coughs> yeah. All right, and we'll tell you, we'll ask you more about what you're doing now. Lorna, coming to you, uh, the country knows you and recognizes you as an iconic athlete uh, who we've celebrated for many years. Mm. And then you made this transition. You diversified your brand. You opened this world-class training center. Um, and then you also moved to doing clothing, which we'll come to in just a bit. But what inspired you to make that transition from what it is you've done all your life to diversifying your brand? Uh, Janet, after competing all over the world, visited so many countries, mm -hmm. uh, was sponsored by so many companies, I learned quite a bit. Mm. And I thought it would be just a shame to let it go uh, so I decided to to make use of what I learned and bring it into a new a new thing to do for my career, and um, I'm just motivated with that because I have the possibility to do that. I have a good group behind me, mm -hmm. and uh, this was the best way to do. Okay. Yeah. And you know the the, the training center. We can see pictures of it actually on s on screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's been your greatest joy about founding something like this, where you know world-class athletes come and train? I remember um, when we started with the uh, training center, I uh, I had co uh, mm. communication with some of my friends, and I say we could start something like this. And uh, of course, it was impossible because this was uh, you're talking about 17, 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was still competing, mm -hmm. and that uh, made it very difficult also mm -hmm. because the Kenyan way of thinking is or the athletics way of thinking is when you are performing 
you don't have to do other things. And oh, okay. this was really a boost for me. Like, I want to show that even at your performing, mm. you can still uh, do other you things. You can still diversify. Diversify. Well. So we did with a training center. And uh, tra the training center caught all the attention because if I win a race somewhere and I say I train in it 10, mm -hmm. then that was a quick sell. It's a good strategy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very yeah. clever strategy. Yeah. For both of you, and let me start with you, Josephine, <coughs> what's been the greatest challenge for you in trying to get to where you are today, in trying to pursue your dreams and achieve your goals? What has been your, your biggest challenge and how have you overcome it? My biggest challenge has been the resistance mm -hmm. uh, from a highly traditional community where culture is almost superior to the law. And um, uh, uh, just the general perception of uh, uh, people looking at you like uh, you're interfering with our culture mm. and why are you telling us to stop this? We've been doing it for years. Mm. And uh, so I've, I've, I've continued because I remember when we were even starting and some women were telling me, oh, you're not going to do it. We've tried things like this in Samburu and it's impossible. Mm. So I told them it's not about doing things. It's doing, it's passion. Okay. And uh, for me, I do it with passion. Mm -hmm. And for as, as long as it's violating a child's rights, then it's a no. You fight for it. Yes. And that's mm -hmm. how you manage to yes. overcome it. That's <coughs> powerful. What about mm -hmm. you, Lorna? How do you overcome the obstacles and challenges that have come your way when trying to build your dream? Um, I've always said, uh, as you build your dream, and uh, my father told me one time, when the more challenges you get, th then you know you are in on, on the right path. Mm -hmm. So whenever I get challenges, it motivates me to say I'm on the right path and wanting to to conquer it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's kind of motivation, big motivation for me. Yeah. So no challenge can be bigger. Okay. Then uh, just before we wind up, one or two more questions. Are you happy with the state of where we are as women in Africa in Kenya, or what would you like to see? What more would you like to see? I think Kenya has come so far. Uh, if I see 20 years down the line, mm -hmm. we have come uh, quite far, mm -hmm. but there's still so much to be done. Mm -hmm. And um, the speed is, is a little bit slow, but I think I the last two years we have seen a tremendous uh, improvement. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we continue like this, uh, hopefully in another 15 years we'll reach where we are going. All right, what yeah. about you? Yeah, she says we've made strides as a country. We've come a long way, uh, but we still have a lot to input yeah. to empower women and to get us somewhere. somewhere. Because we have so many women who are still down children and they need to be lifted up yeah. so that we can move together as a country. Okay. Yeah. All right, two more questions. Uh, one of them is, tell us a little bit about, you just launched a sports apparel line. I think you're the first, correct me if I'm wrong, the first African woman in the world to launch an African-inspired sports clothing line? Yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, the first African person. Mm. First African person? To launch a uh, sports apparel. Mm. And again, uh, as I said before, yeah. with my yeah. uh, competition all over the world and being sponsored by several companies where their clothing line was were, were not motivating to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, um, tonight, I took the, 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 the inspiration from the Maasai Sampuru people, mm -hmm. and uh, she's here now, yeah. and our culture. And there you are with the first lady during the launch. Yeah, yeah and our culture is uh, very beautiful, and um, we need to be happy and uh, be proud of it. Yeah. And there would have been no other way for me to bring it out this, yeah. apart from in the sports apparel. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. an amazing uh, feat. And for you, what is it that you're embarking on now? with your foundation? Uh, we are currently uh, hopefully uh, want to build a rescue center for the girls because uh, most of these girls run away and now that information is out there these kids try to run out of these issues yeah. and they have nowhere to go yeah. so we lack a rescue center mm -hmm. and that's what we are embarking on. Right okay now. Yeah. and finally which woman most inspires you? For me it's uh, Excellency the first lady mm -hmm. of the Republic of Kenya just the idea that she took running to run for a cause for Beyond Zero, for to save uh, children and mothers mm -hmm. dying during birth, is just an amazing. I mean, she she has she she has everything that you know. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to do this, and knowing how running is, how running a marathon is, it's so tough. And for me, she I'm so proud of her, mm -hmm. and she so inspires me the best. Okay. Yeah. Great. What about you? Well, definitely, apart from my mother, who yeah. I've always mentioned again yeah. here, I think, Mongari uh, Mathai does it for me. And she did it with resilience, with passion, mm -hmm. and she didn't 
care at least she did what she could do mm. and uh, i like how she says it be the hummingbird yeah and that's my do style. the best you can yes. wow so we really celebrate both of you all the best with your uh, clothing line. i think people can learn more about it on facebook etc and if they want twitter. to yep. and on twitter and for you with everything you're doing Thank you look beautiful by Thank the way you. with your <laughs> yeah, yeah with your with your get up and my, you yeah, wearing yeah. one yeah. of your own yeah. Yeah. Thank you both so much for coming and sharing your hopes and dreams Thank you. with us. Thank all you right. so much. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. But our dong brings us all the latest sports.